Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to my weekend live. I am tuning in from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, one of the most multinational cities in the world. Today, we are going to talk about 21 steps to use feng shui in your home. But before I talk about that, I'm wishing all of you season's greetings. Merry Christmas, if you do celebrate it. And, um, and best of luck in the new year and happy holidays. So, 21 steps to use feng shui in your home. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Francisca. I am a former educator who has taught English as a second language and French from middle school to university levels in the United States, in Canada and China for over 20 years. I am an author of four books. The first book that I wrote was The Naked Educator, How to Survive in the Middle Kingdom. The second one is The Naked Educator, Secrets to Surviving in China as an Expatriate, second edition. And the third one, I was a co-author of the book, 365 Empowering Stories. And my chapter is My Journey, The Seven Amazing Steps That Shrunk My Uterine Fibroids. And my most popular book is How I Conquered Breast Cancer Without Chemotherapy, My Journey from a Mess to a Message. For those of you who don't have your Christmas gifts, if you are in Toronto and you're looking for some last minute gifts, I have a few books here for sale so you can contact me. So I am also a speaker with a DTM. A DTM is a Distinguished Toastmasters Award, which is the highest award bestowed to a Toastmasters. Member, I would give that the equivalent of a PhD in Toastmasters. And I am also a wealth creator with a mind assistance program and a real estate investor. So, Feng Shui is an ancient Chinese practice that focuses on creating harmony and balance in one's living space. So here are 21 steps to incorporate feng shui into your home. I learned about feng shui when I was in China. I had some Chinese friends and through conversation, they taught me about feng shui. And it was even one of the lessons I had to teach when I was in China. So number one, declutter. Remove unnecessary items from your home to allow positive energy to flow and they call that chi. Declutter your home. If you don't need something, you give it away, donate it. Because one person's garbage is another person's treasure. If you do a cleanse your home, anything that you don't need, put it in a bag and give it away to Salvation Army Habitat for Humanity. There are donation boxes everywhere around the city where you can donate your clothes and other items. Second one is clean and repair. Regularly clean and fix any broken items in your home to maintain a positive energy flow. Yesterday, one of my friends invited me to her home for dinner and she showed me around the whole house. She had renovated her whole house. Her kitchen was immaculate, it was very nice. She showed me the new cupboards and everything. Well, she had lost her husband a year ago. So I assume inheritance from her husband is what she used to renovate her home. I didn't ask her, but I knew. I just put two and two together. Her home now is so beautiful. She repaired everything that needed repaired and it's so spick and span. Everything is painted, everything is good. Number three. Balance the five elements. Incorporate the five elements. Wood, fire, earth, metal, water 
in your decor to achieve balance and harmony. Everything in life you should try to have balance so nothing is too much or nothing is too little. Number four, position your bed properly. Place your bed so that you can see the bedroom door, but avoid positioning it directly in line with the door. The reason why you should not position your, your bed in front of the door, because if you do that according to the feng shui rules and principles, it's a dead man's position. It's a coffin position and it may prevent you from sleeping well and you may have nightmares. Number five, avoid sharp corners. Round or soften sharp corners of furniture to reduce negative energy. So if you have some sharp corners on your furniture, you could try to put a little cushion to cover it. Use mirrors wisely. Place mirrors to reflect beautiful views and natural light, but avoid placing them directly facing the bed. I learned that if you put a mirror directly facing the bed, it may disrupt you from sleeping and you may have nightmares. Also, mirrors are used in a small, small space to make the room look bigger. Number seven, choose soothing colors. Use common colors like blues, greens, and neutrals and avoid overly stimulating colors. Number eight, position your furniture carefully. Arrange furniture to allow for a smooth flow of energy and to create conversation areas. Be careful how you place your furniture in your home. Some people's homes are too crowded with too much furniture and too much decor. Two weeks ago, a university professor who was doing research, she reached out to me and she said that she wanted to interview me. She was interviewing all interpreters and I was a French interpreter for 10 years. She came all the way from Ottawa. She used to live in Toronto. So she said, choose a place where you want us to meet, but it has to be a quiet place. So I said, do you mind if you come to my home? She said, no, I don't mind at all. And when she came into my home, she looked around and she had said, Francisca, of all the homes that I have been to, yours is the best so far. I said, why you say so? I have been to home where they were so cluttered, so much, so many things on the wall. You can leave some walls bare. Every wall does not have to have a piece of decoration. It makes it so crowded and it will affect the energy. You don't want every wall to have a little, a little piece of decoration. Some walls can be left bare. All right. So number nine, add indoor plants. All right. Add indoor, oops, sorry. Add indoor plants. And if you, you cannot do the plants because you are allergic, then you can use artificial ones, but they are plants. It makes it very beautiful. All right. Illuminate your space. It means use a combination of natural and artificial lighting to create a well-lit and inviting atmosphere. As I am doing this Facebook Live, I have the ceiling light, I have a computer light, and I have the white lights. All right. Number 11, hang art thoughtfully. Hang artwork that inspires and uplifts you and avoid displaying images with negative connotations. Number 12, repair leaks. Fix any leaks or plumbing issues promptly to prevent the stagnation of energy. Number 13, keep the entryway clear. Ensure that the entrance to your home is clutter free and welcoming to invite positive energy. Another reason why you should keep your entryway free and clear, if there's an emergency, let's say there's a fire broke out and you want to escape, 
you want your entryway free and clear so you can escape fast enough. All right. Number 14, place a feng shui fountain. Adding a small water feature like a fountain can promote the flow of positive energy. So everything about feng shui is trying to create positive energy in your life, in your home, and in your surroundings. Number 15, incorporate wooden furniture. Use wooden furniture to bring in the element of wood, symbolizing growth and vitality. Number 16, position the stove and oven. Place the stove in a commanding position in the kitchen to symbolize wealth and abundance. Number 17, add crystals. Place crystals strategically to attract positive energy and promote balance. Use wind chimes. Hang wind chimes near windows or doors to promote positive energy and deter negative forces. 19. Balance yin and yang. Achieve a balance between dark and light, soft and hard to create harmony. Number 20. Personalize your space. Surround yourself with positive, with personal items that bring joy and positive memories. Things like this, okay? This is like a stress ball. And this is like a little elephant. I got this as a gift. This is for good luck. Okay. Be mindful of Sha Chi. Avoid placing sharp objects or pointing corners at yourself as they can create negative energy known as Sha Chi. Now, remember that Feng Shui is a personal and intuitive practice and it's essential to adapt it to your preferences and cultural background. Experiment with these steps to create a home environment that aligns with your sense of balance and well-being. Another thing that I want to add, if you go into most people's offices, the desk is facing the door. That's a feng shui practice. When you have a computer, do not face the computer towards the wall. Face it towards the door, and that brings wealth and prosperity. So these are just something that I wanted to share about feng shui, and I learned about it when I lived in Shenzhen, China. I was in China from 20, October 2014 to October 2015. Thank you very much for listening. Have a good morning, have a good afternoon, and have a good evening wherever you might be tuning in from. I will talk to you tomorrow. I haven't yet decided on the topic. Now, if you like what you have heard, please like, share, and comment on my YouTube channel because I will transfer this to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Have a very nice day. Seasons greetings and Merry Christmas for those of you who celebrate it. See you all tomorrow.